Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave, and today I want to talk about writing or selling put options as a replacement for those limit orders that you maybe used in the past. But because you've been following along on my options basic playlist, which I'll link above everywhere here, if you've been following along on that, then this is what I would say is the first real world application. If you're just getting your feet wet, this is a great place to start. So writing or selling put options as a replacement for a limit order. So I'll show you exactly how this works because it's gonna activate our money. It's gonna put money in our pocket right now. It's gonna be great. But there are three exceptions to when we can use this. So I'll show you what those are as well. Anyway, if that is what you're looking for, please stick around. Whoop. So writing put options or selling put options, it's the same thing as a great way to get started in the options market because it's a simple technique to get used to. Because as soon as you write this, you can kind of just sit back, relax, and uh, see how it goes because you get to pick all those different ingredients you want to put into this. So we're going to pick our underline, something we want to own long term. We're going to say this is the strike price where we're, we're happy to own it. And uh, by selling this option right now, we get to collect a premium. So we get to activate that money that's sitting on the sideline. These are all reasons why it's far superior to a, just a limit order where your money just kind of sits around waiting to see if it ever gets to that price. So by activating our money, far superior. Now there are three times when uh, this won't work out very well for you. So let's check those boxes. And the first one is the fact that we're on the hook for 100 shares. So when we sell a put, we might have to buy 100 shares of the underline. So if we sell a put at a $10 strike price and it gets assigned to us at $10, that means we have to buy 100 shares, which is $1,000. So a lot of people can probably afford that, but if it's not a $10 stock, it's a $100 stock, that means it's $10,000. And if you go all the way up to like something like SPY, which is trading at $375 a share right now, that's ticker symbol SPY, that's $37,500. So that becomes a bigger and bigger obstacle for people as we scale this up. So that the fact that we have to buy 100 shares is definitely a big reason why selling a put may not work. The second reason that you may consider a limit order over selling a put is the fact that there are no take backs, right? It's, no, it's not that simple to just close it out and move it to another price. So if you have a particular stock, stock XYZ is at 100, comes out with bad earnings, it goes down to 93 and you had a limit at 90, you just take your limit order away and you go, I didn't really like that anyway, I'm going to go to 85. Well, if you sell a put, you can't really do that, right? You're going to sell a put at a $90 strike price and you're going to collect your $100 premium. If the next day that opens up at $93 after a bad earnings call, well, if you decide to buy to close because you don't like it anymore, it's going to cost you $300. You're going to lose $200 on that trade. Then you can sell the next one lower. You might get a little bit back then, but you realize that it's it's not just I'm taking it back. So you got to be pretty certain about the stock that you chose and the price that you chose. And the third reason to consider a limit order over selling a put contract has to do with price and expiration limitations with options. So if you're really specific, you want to buy McDonald's when it hits 273.50, you can do that. Really simple. And whenever it happens, it occurs, right? But with selling an option, you're going to limit yourself to expirations that happen on Friday as McDonald's trades weekly options. And as far as the price goes, it's going to be nice round numbers because with McDonald's at about $270 a share, you're going to be able to pick 280, 275, 270 but it's not gonna get down to the nitty gritty there. So just something to consider. So for me personally, I have not placed a limit order in a long time. I sell put contracts, I collect premium, I take my wife out for that sushi dinner. It works out really well. But uh, I have done a video similar to this in the past. I'll link that above as well if you wanna back up what you're hearing here today. But it was all about creating your own dip, you know, on ETFs that you really wanna buy and own for the long term. So similar content, just presented a little bit differently. But uh, today I want to walk through a trade. I'm going to do this on energy transfer. So again, I'll link that video above too, because I just did one on this energy transfer ET, which is an MLP. Not for everyone, but I think for uh, certain people, it plays out really well. And what I like about it for this per particular example is it's trading about $12 a share. So accessible for people. I'm not saying do it with ET, but showing it with a $12 stock where you only have a $1,200 to invest in this case you know, it shows real world application. So that's what I'm trying to get to for those trying to understand option basics and get involved with something like selling a put. So let's jump in and take a look at this trade. So let's start out by uh, checking out a chart for energy transfer. This is a one year chart just to get our bearings here for what we want to do. And uh, I'm not interested really in this $12 strike price, but let's draw some lines at uh, where I might be looking at it. And that's one other thing, you know, when we're selling puts, 
you are limited to saying, okay, I want to do it at uh, 12 or 11 and a half or 11, usually dollar increments or half dollar increments. And that's the case with energy transfers. Most of these that are around the current price are going to be at half point increments. So if we look at the $11.50 strike, which is right about there, we'll put a line so you can get your bearings. You can kind of see uh, where that would end up at. We can draw another horizontal line here. We can go right down to $11, just kind of get a get an idea of where we would be at. And, and don't forget, this is the strike price. And then we still get to deduct uh, any kind of premium that we receive from that to actually get our break even points. But that's where we're at. We know that's been on an uptrend this year. Energy has been doing great. This pipeline company has been doing really well and uh, people are excited about it. And uh, those are our two prices. So just below that's gonna be our break even. So where do we wanna put this at? Do we wanna do 11.50 or $11 as our strike price? And now let's just jump in and look at our trade and what kind of premium we could generate from this. And of course, if we wanted to, once we pull up our options tab here, we can jump into the option chain. But if you're brand new to options and that's a little bit intimidating, again, we can just do our analysis from here. And, uh, you know, we've, we've done this introduction to options. So again, you can go back and reference that very first video where we said we're going to sell to open in a quantity. In this case, I'm going to do five contracts. Again, it's not a very expensive stock. So if we're talking about a $12 strike price or $11 strike price, uh, that's not a whole lot of money. So if you just did one contract, we're talking about $1,100 or right around there, right? Times five, we're looking at about, uh, what, $6,600 to $7,000. So it really depends on you and how you want to do this and uh, what your account value looks like, obviously, and what you feel comfortable with as far as number of contracts. But I'm gonna go with five in this case. I'm gonna sell to open five. And if I go out to an expiration date uh, one month from now, uh, let's go out to that uh, December 9th date, right? We're gonna see that $11.50 strike price uh, is going to uh, get us around uh, 21 cents. So if we just did a market order in this case, We'd see we get about $101 with it trading right now at 12.12, so $12.12. So it also calculates our break even. So our max gain right now, if we sell this, is about $105 minus fees, 101.75. We see our max loss if ET goes to zero. Do you think that's going to happen? I don't think that's going to happen, but that's what the max loss actually shows you, right? If you sell this put, this thing goes all the way to zero. That's your max loss. Not something I'm concerned about. And there's our break even of 11.29, basically taking our $11.50 minus our credit from our uh, put that we're getting uh, to collect that premium. That gives us our $11.29 break even point. Okay, so keep that in mind. We're gonna go plug this into our calculator here in a second as well. And uh, we're gonna check that out. So that gets us about $101, okay? Now, if we wanted to uh, maybe even go a little bit lower, we could. How about we check the $11 strike price? Go shopping a little bit more. Again, market, day. Okay, so this gets us around $57. Again, now we, we cut our, our premium in about half. Right? We're getting 12 bucks. So all together, we're going to get about 60 after fees, around $57, somewhere in there. And uh, our max loss, again, same. Our break even, that was all the way down to $10.88. So how do you feel about that trade? Again, go back to our charts. Look at that 11. Make sure you feel comfortable with it. Now I think we got to determine which one of these two do we want to do. I know I want to do it out about 30 days. I feel comfortable with that. I know that I want to do an 11.50 or $11 strike price, but which one should we do? And for that, I want to go to my options calculator, which uh, I often share on this channel as well. Uh, that'll be linked down below if you want to take a look at that. There's also, also a video about it, kind of going through how to utilize it. Um, it's pretty basic, but uh, I think it's a good utility to have in your back pocket. And these numbers are always changing. So this is just a quick snapshot. Again, today's date, number of contracts. We're doing this side by side. So over here, we're gonna do our uh, 1150 strike price and here we're gonna do our $11 strike price just so we can kind of, again, get an idea of what we feel good about here. So again, we're selling a put at 1150 strike price with an expiration on 12.9. They're both set up that same way, same stock price. Um, one's at 1150 strike and one's at $11 strike price. And uh, so you can see when I say percent from strike, I'm saying that has to fall a 5.116% in order to get to the strike price from its current price over the next uh, 30 days, because that's how long this is till expiration. Likewise, over here, this one has to fall 9.2%, okay? Over here, we collect about $100. Over here, we collect about $57. Again, approximate, and these are moving around as we speak, so we'll go back and look at it, but this should give us enough reference data to make a decision. 
So we're gonna make 100 bucks or $57 the day we sell this, the moment we sell this, it's gonna drop into our account. We're gonna have that money available. Now, collateral-wise, this one's gonna be $5,750 in case it gets put to us and we have to buy 100 shares, whereas over here, it's only 5,500, right? So in the case of five contracts, per contract, $50 times five, $250 difference between these two positions. So if I do get assigned, if this thing drops all the way to $10 a share, right? There's gonna be a difference in the value that I'm paying for this of 250 bucks for five contracts, 500 shares. Okay, and just kinda of keep it in mind where we're at here. So we hold this for 30 days. And uh, if you annualize this return, if you take our return over this 30 day period, it's 1.7%. But if we annualize that times 365 days, like we did this all the time throughout the year, we get a 21% return for this strike price at 1150. But obviously, if we are only willing to buy it at $11, well, that's going to drop it significantly, right? Down to about 1% or 12.6% annualized. So when I'm selling puts, I generally aim for this 10 to 15%. I'm pretty conservative when it comes to selling puts most of the time. So in this case, I feel probably more comfortable here with this $11 strike price. Maybe I'll never own ET, but I'm putting my money to work and I'm going to collect that 12.5%. 21%, yes, nice big number, nice round number, get my $100, it's a much better sushi dinner, higher quality than what I'm gonna get down here. But I feel like this might be a better use of my money, a little bit more conservative. And uh, let's not forget, if I do this and I get this break even, which you'll see calculated down here of 10.89, I feel pretty good about ET at $10.89, a little bit better than I feel it at, you know, at $11.30. So which one would you pick? You have to decide for yourself. Then of course down here you can kind of work through this as well but uh, this shows us if the stock is above the strike and it expires what our return would be how we put our money into action right now this is our uh, stock price at any position that we would want to pick obviously it's not 65 but let's say it goes to eight dollars a share let's say we get horrible information well there's our our loss right whereas over here let's say it ends up at uh i don't know um ten dollars and fifty cents well let me lose a little bit we, why is that well we know what our break even is right we, we figured that out before that's ten dollars and 89 cents so 1050 is a little bit above there so again if i put in ten dollars and 89 cents should, we should pretty much be at break even right so, so you get that and then there's the break even calculation at the bottom so for me i'm going to go back and i'm, I'm looking at this 11 dollars strike price and if i can get about that 57 dollars, that's probably where i will pull the trigger let's take a look so let's jump back over to fidelity because i've made my decision on with the et at 12 dollars and 10 cents i'm going to sell it open five contracts five put contracts out about a month that 11 dollars strike price now i am going to set this you can do a market order i prefer a limit order when i'm doing this and i'm going to set my bid price at 12 cents you can even maybe push for 13 and play around a little bit but 12 cents their margin none auto 60 dollars preview order and uh place my order so my trade did go through, and here's the summary of that trade. So altogether, I collected $60, but I had to pay $3 in commission and 14 cents in fees. So I got to keep my premium of $56.86, just enough to afford about half the sushi dinner that I did eat tonight. So not too bad. But the $3.14 is pretty significant, so you do want to track that. It will add up over time. That represents over 5% of the commission that I collected in this particular trade. So be mindful of that, and uh, everybody's uh, is going to be a little bit different depending on what brokerage you use. So uh, that's my trade, and I'm off to the races collecting $56 for that $11 strike price. Now, I did this around lunchtime, and now it's the end of the day. So the second half of the day was not good. Uh, it was just not a good day. So uh, the stock market, pretty much everything was down for the second half of the day. And you can kind of see here, I collected $56.86. That's my cost basis. It shows here. But uh, ET closed down under $12 a share. And uh, the value now, if you wanted to do the same trade, you would get about $80, right? If I wanted to buy to close this right now, it would I would have to pay about $80 and I would lose about $23. So right now it shows that I'm down. But as long as my principles are still correct, that I want to buy ET and I'm okay buying it at $11 a share, and knowing my break even is a little bit even lower than that, then uh, all this doesn't really matter, right? So as far as getting introduced to options, I can sit back and I can relax and I can let this play out. I don't have to worry about buying to close this. I'm not trying to trade options for income. I'm trying to utilize option premium to activate my money and get stocks at a price that I like. So 
That looks great to me. So for those that have been following along with my options basic playlist, we talked about Coca-Cola, we sold the put call, bought a put call, all that all the way through till expiration. Kind of the same thing here with ET. Only at this point, I wanna buy this and hold it for the long term. So if it does fall to my strike price and gets assigned to me, great. I'll take it, I'll keep it for a long, long time. I'm not gonna even sell calls against it. I'm just adding it to my portfolio. That's the position I'm taking, and that's why I like this as a great introduction to options. So if you have any questions on this at all, please ask down below. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Really appreciate you watching. Have a great night. Take care. Whoop.